So good day, great to uh, have you with us. And uh, we are really excited because I have my good friend, my colleague, my brother, uh, brother Martin with us, who is a teacher of the word. And we are starting a, or starting to record, we have started the ministry long ago, but start to re starting to record uh, SOW, so, which is School of the Word. And the idea of this is we're gonna put uh, together sessions of 30 minutes each so that we can dive into the word and understand the background of the word. So uh, my dear brother here, um, if uh, we uh, talk about the different, um, where we God called some people to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors, the last one, a teacher, this is who he is. He's a teacher of the word. Mm -hmm. I love the way that he breaks the word open. I love the way that he explains it. So uh, we thought, let's put this on, on the video so you guys can also be part of the blessing and not only myself. So this is the man, Brother Martin, and we are blessed that you are going to share the word with us. So I'm going to introduce him. He's going to tell us what this is going to be all about. What will the course that we are doing? So what will it be all about? And why should we do that, Brother Martin? He does, Brother. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for having me. It's um, indeed an honor for me to be able to share with the, with the brethren from the Word of God. The School of the Word, we're going to start with uh, four main courses. We'll do an introduction to the Old Testament, an overview so that believers can understand the Old Testament. Right. Then we'll do an introduction to the New Testament. We'll also look at uh, some of the new people you find in the New Testament. Okay. For example, you come across uh, scriptures like uh, when Paul was arrested by the centurion, when there was a riot in the city, right. and then um, Paul is taken by the centurion and then he's interrogated. Uh -huh. The centurion says to him, are you not um, the assassin who led away 4,000 people into the desert? That's right. in the book of Acts. Okay. Now the question is, Who's the assassin? Who is there? Exactly. Who are the assassins? Exactly. What's the Bible talking about assassins or, or terrorists? Or who are they? <laughs> so such as uh, some of the things that we want to be able to unpack so that believers can be able to have that kind of background. Or the time that Gamaliel, mm -hmm. when the disciples were arrested yeah. and interrogated for preaching in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ and the man getting healed. Gamaliel, the respected Pharisee, stood up in the council and said uh, to them, we have to be very cautious what we do with this man. Yeah. Remember, there used to be Judas of Galilee and Feudas who thought they were people of repute. Yeah. But their movements died after the leaders were executed. Right. So if this thing is of man, it will die. Mm. But if it's of God, you'll find yourself fighting against God. Sure. Now, the question that comes to mind is, who was Judas? Who was those guys? Who was Judas? Who are those guys? Exactly. So some of the things are things that we want to be able to unpack in the wow. introduction to the New Testament. Wow. Then also look at um, the period between the two testaments. Right. Usually when we close the Old Testament, hmm. Israel and the Jews are under the Persian rule. But the moment we open the book of Matthew, they're under the Roman rule. Exactly. What happened? <laughs> In this short space of time, and many times when believers read that, they think it's just the next page. Yeah. What they don't understand is that there's actually a huge gap between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. Yeah. So that 400 year silence, that period of silence, mm. we also want to unpack that as well. Wow. And see what happened during that time. Because also other thing you find in that time is when we're closing the Old Testament, we've got um, priests, mm -hmm. we've got Levites, we've got scribes. Uh -huh. But the moment we open the New Testament, you meet Pharisees and Sadducees mm -hmm. and Zealots <laughs> and Herodians. Who are they? Exactly. Where they come from? Exactly. They're not in the Old Testament. Yeah. So I want to unpack that as well. Wow. And then we'll end it up with um, how do we study the Bible? How do we study? How do we study okay. the Bible? Okay. Because the idea is we've got to study the Word of God so that it, it's of benefit to us as believers. Exactly. Exactly. We, are, we should be able to study this because God gave us the Word to be able to study it. study it. Jesus Himself said, "Study the Scriptures in John 5." Mm. So we need to study them. Amen. And understand. Wow. So that's what that's what basically I, what you're I, I trust you must be thinking, whoa, I must not miss this. Because I mean, just as you share that with me, I'm feeling, wow, I must get to know all this uh, 
this information. So, so a question quickly I want to throw at you is, is the Old Testament not kind of uh, irrelevant for now? I mean, should we, be, should we worry about the Old Testament? Well, yes, we should. We should, Pastor. Because if you think of it, the Bible is actually a collection. It's a library. Okay. And there are 66 books or 66 volumes in the Bible. Right. And the Old Testament make up 39 of those books. And the New Testament only has 27 of those books. Right. Now, if we neglect the Old Testament, we are basically neglecting about 80% of the content. Exactly. And uh, that's why it's important for us to say the Old Testament, because there's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament that can only be understood, in the New Testament, that can only be understood properly if we understand the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Take, for instance, John 1, 29. Right. The Bible says Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God, exactly. How do we understand the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world if we don't know what the sacrificial system was like? What is the lamb? I mean, yes. I mean, it, it won't. It actually won't make sense mm. if you uh, you read because I know we are probably both guilty that so often, and and maybe you as well. We when a newborn believer mm. has just been born again, we yeah. always tell them start the book of John, yes. which is understandable because they have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if that guy reads there about the Lamb of God, how will he even know what is the Lamb of God who takes away the if he doesn't have the Old Testament background? Amen. Wow. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. Or even in the New Testament itself, you come across in the book of John, a scripture such as John 10, 22, okay. where the Bible says Jesus attended the Feast of Dedication. Right. Now, if you go to the book of Leviticus, where the feasts are listed, the seven feasts are listed, there's no Feast of Dedication. Okay, so the question is, what is that? Wait, wait, wait what's that feast? Right. Where did it come from? Right, right. That Jesus attended. Yeah. So we've got to be able to unpack that yeah. And be able to give that understanding of what the Feast of Dedication actually prefers to. About. What it's all about. That is really interesting. Mm. And so that's just part of what we need to understand the Old Testament. But again, if you look at the Old Testament itself, Pastor, um, when Jesus overcame the enemy, the devil in the, in, 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 in the, in the wilderness during his temptation of 40 years, 40 okay. days fasting and the, the, the temptation yeah. in the wilderness, mm. he said it is written three times. Oh, yeah. And true, all those true. three times, we actually scriptures from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy. True, true. Or Peter, when he, he preached. Just, just back up a moment. You, you, mm. you and I talk about when Jesus was tempted by the devil mm -hmm. after that 40 day fast. So he says to the devil, It is written mm -hmm. three times. Yes. And, but it hasn't been written yet in the New Testament. No, it's not been written. We, we don't have the New Testament. Yes, we don't. Time. So, it was so actually, when he said it is written, mm -hmm. He refers back to the Old, the Old Testament. Testament. Because that's the only wow. scriptures that they had available. Exactly. exactly. Or even when, when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, yeah. 3,000 people came to Christ. Yeah, but What did he use? Exactly. The Old Testament. Exactly. He talks of quoting from the book of Joel, yeah. and that's in the Old Testament. Mm. Mm. Or even think of Paul. Paul says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. What does he have in mind? What scripture? What scripture? It's the Old Testament. Exactly. So the Old Testament actually is of real value to us. Wow. Because the final revelation of God mm. is in the New Testament yeah. about his son who takes away the sins of the world. Right. But we can't understand this final revelation without having the background and the context of the Old Testament where it all comes from. Wow. Where it all starts in the book of Genesis yeah. after Adam and Eve had sinned mm. and God has to kill a lamb and has to clothe them yeah. with the skin, has to shed blood. Yeah. So there's, the, 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 actually the seed is planted right there in Genesis 3, sure. that will come minutes later on in Christ dying mm. in the New Testament. Wow. Later on. Goodness. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when you listen to this, you think to yourself, wow, I must not miss this, because this is really going to make me understand the Bible so much better. Mm -hmm. So my brother, I'm excited, man. That's uh, that's awesome. So so you say the first, uh, not session, but the first um, part we're going to dive into will be the the Old Testament. Yes, understanding the Old Testament, the Old Testament. Or, or, uh, introduction to the Old Testament. Yes, mm -hmm. and the next one then we're going to dive into will be the New the Testament, Testament, the period between the two Testaments, mm -hmm. and what was the last and one then again? How to study? How to study the, the word and understand yes. the word. Mm -hmm. Also. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, so are we going to dive into it right now, the Old Testament? Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. 
We can start actually with a, an introduction to the New Testament itself, and then just maybe give an understanding of what we are going to be able to, to right. discuss. Right. Because if you think of the Old Testament itself, you ask questions like, is it really the word of God? Oh, yeah. Is it really the word of God? Where did it come from? Exactly. What's its origin? Exactly. And then if you think of it again, you look at the period itself, a lot of books were in existence at the time. Mm. How did they determine which books should be part of the Bible, the Bible and exactly. which ones should be left out? Mm. Mm. Those are some of the things that we need to be able to understand as well. Yeah. And if you look at it again, who decided? Which books must who, be who decided? Which who decided? must be in and what must be out? What must be out? Exactly. That's the things that we need. Those are questions that we normally find ourselves with, and sometimes we find people say, "But you see, the Old Testament is full of errors." Mm. Like, like, like recently, I was listening to one of these uh, scholars on YouTube who says um, David was a myth. Yeah, King David never existed. existed. I mean, my goodness, he is like. Um, King Arthur mm. in those mythological comics that we have been reading. Oh, okay. But you know, I would just like saying God has a sense of humor because King David, as people are digging up, archaeological like digs are being done, mm. they've discovered a lot of stuff that referred to King David. Oh, yeah. For example, they discovered what are known as stilas, is a, um, a concrete. Um, slab on which some recordings have been done. Mm. And then this particular king was referring to King Omri, whom we find in the Old Testament, okay. who was of the house of David. Uh -huh. So, David, so find David. Omri, Omri was part of the line of David, so which means there was mm. a line before Omri. Okay. There was somebody called David before Omri himself mm. came into existence. Mm. And then another guy was saying one time, it actually came out in uh, Newsweek and on CNN and as well that uh, camels are out of place in the Bible because they read Genesis 12, okay. they, from Genesis 12, the story of Abraham, that Abraham had camels. Okay. And according to them, there were no camels at the time. Oh. But later on, as archaeologists have dug up, no. they've discovered camel bones of camels before even the time of Abraham himself. Okay. Right. But what they okay. tend to forget in that scripture is that Abraham got his camels from Pharaoh of Egypt. Egypt. Okay. Where Pharaoh got them from, we're not told, but history can say probably he got them from Arabia, the okay. Arabian mm -hmm. nomads who came to trade in exactly. Egypt, probably exchange, exchange exchanged camels with, for, for something, something else. else from that Egypt exactly. had. Exactly. So there's all these things that they say that alleged errors in the Bible will we'll be, we'll be yeah. unpacking some of those as well wow. and examining them as well. Okay. Another thing we also look at in the Old Testament is um, because we've got to have a background mm. to understand what the Old Testament is all about. Because the Bible records a lot of historical accounts right. in the Old Testament. Right. Right. And we are introduced to a lot of um, Kings that lived at a time. Okay. But we've got to be able to establish is the biblical account correct or is it falsified? Right. But when we go into normal mainline ancient history, yeah. we discover that actually some of those kings that the Bible talks about are actually mentioned in, in history. In, in history, okay. Yeah, they, they are not biblical books, but they are history. They are historical books. Okay, historical books. Yeah. Yes, they are not even biblical books. They are mm. historical books written by people who are not even but believers they, at yeah. all, but, but they discover those people are mentioned in, in those all right. books. So the, another confirmation. Confirmation yeah. that the Bible was true all along. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is mentioned in history. Mm. Mm. Right. And a lot of, um, even, even mm. Alexander, King Alexander, Alexander the Great is mentioned in history. Okay. We have him in the book of Daniel. Yeah. Daniel talks about him. Cyrus the Persian king, Daniel talks about him. So these people are mentioned in historical events. Also in the Are actually mentioned also in, in the Bible. Okay. The Bible talked about them, like for example, King Cyrus, the Bible talked about him years before he was even born. In the book wow. of Isaiah. Wow. Isaiah said to that Cyrus was 
my anointed one. Okay. And it even spells out what he was going to be able to achieve and to wow. do. And when Cyrus is born and he, his conquests are recorded, it's exactly what, what Isaiah, Isaiah had spoken prophesied. way before. It sure, that's powerful. Eh? So goodness. the prophecy itself of the Bible is yeah. proof yeah. that the scriptures are actually reliable. Yes. And, and if you talk about prophecies in the Old Testament, they, there's, there's so many referring to the Messiah yes. and how Jesus fit into yes. all of those uh, everything uh, Old Testament prophecies. Where he was going to be born. Exactly. What was going to be taking place during the time he was going to be born. The flight to Egypt. The flight to Egypt. Exactly. All those are recorded in the Old Testament and they're fulfilled exactly. in the New Testament right to the last sure. dot. That is just amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Other things also we want to be able to be able to unpack in the side of the Old Testament is um, something to do with the geography. Because as oh, believers, yeah. when you read the Bible, we come across so many geographical mm. uh, issues in the Old Testament. You find yeah. uh, like a, like a scripture that says, uh, "Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity." In Psalm one thirty three, oh, yeah. it's like the the, the, the oil, oil that flowed from the beard of yeah. Aaron, and uh, mm. and it talks about Mount Hermon. Yeah, the now, Jew on the the yeah. Jew on Mount Hermon. Exactly. Now the question is, was the Jew on Mount <laughs> Hermon? What was so special about the Jew that, on Mount Hermon exactly. that it should be mentioned specifically? Right. So you've got those geographical issues that you find in the Old Testament. Mm. You even have geographical places yeah. that are mentioned in the Old Testament. We've got to be able to find See, those exactly. Like, 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 like one thing that has fascinated me was um, when, when, when um, God told Moses to take Israel out of Egypt, mm. he said he must take them to Sinai. Oh, yeah. Now, if you go on the internet and, choose and click for Mount Sinai on Google, mm. it will point you to a place in Egypt. Okay, right. But the question is, God said they must leave the land. Yeah. If they're going to leave the land and still be in Egypt, yeah, how does that work? Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. So there must be another Mount Sinai somewhere else yeah, exactly. apart from Egypt. Egypt exactly. And we are going to, to, to look into those things. Yeah, we're going to find because Mount Sinai has been found. Yeah. That's not in Egypt, in another place, mm. which actually fits the biblical account. Of the hill even is at the top because you remember when God came down to with the time of the the the, 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 the law giving the to law. Moses, yeah, the there was fire that came down and the top was bent. Yeah. There's a mountain that's been found where the top is actually bent. Wow! And they talk about uh, Moses hitting the rock and yeah. water coming out of the rock. There's a rock that has been found, which is split. Wow! And it's believed that that's the rock where. Where the, the water, where the water uh, came, came out to, 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 to <laughs> give water to the people. Oh. And it's as I say that when you go into that area, the local people will tell you, this is where Moses came with his people. Wow, look at that. And that's not in Egypt. Right. So which means the issue of Sinai being in Egypt is something that has to right. be revisited. We have to revisit that and understand yeah. the, the idea. Yeah. Wow, now you, you excite me. You excite me to, uh, to really want to journey with you on this uh, this whole idea. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, that I think the problem is with so many of us is that we read things without thinking further than what we are reading. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we should read and say, uh, but what does this actually mean? Like all the things you've mentioned now. Yeah. There's yeah. so many things you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it would be so great if we can just understand so many things that are behind uh, Amen. what we actually read the scripture. Like, like the Feast of Dedication, all those things you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, let's... Uh, Let's get ready to dive into the introduction of the Old Testament. Amen. That will be going to do the introduction of the Old Testament. So we're going to dive into that one. All right. So you have the mic. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's explain to us what's happening with the introduction of the, the Old Testament. Yes, I get my notes. I truly hope that this excites you the way that it excites me and that we... Uh, that you are excited to be part of uh, this whole um, uh, sessions that we are going to be doing. So we, we are going to we're going to close this session, and uh, we're going to dive into the very next session just after this one. We're going to take a bit of a break. You can go uh, have some coffee quickly or something like that, and then we're going to we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to dive right into the very next session. God bless you, and uh, see you in session one.
of uh, the introduction of the Old Testament. God Amen. bless you. Amen.